In celebration of RDTE finally hitting the market this week, I'm going to be doing a breakdown video on QDTE's dividends so far. All the distributions added up, we're going to look at the drip, see how much this thing has returned, and check out the disparity between the highs and lows of the dividend of this fund. But first, I want to check out RDTE. So we're going to jump into this one a little bit, see what the, what the information they've put out is all about, and then we'll talk about QDTE. So I hope that's okay. If you guys like this kind of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out a bunch and gets the community growing, which I really, really appreciate. So don't forget to do that, and I will jump straight into it. So from the beginning, we can see it looks pretty similar to the other Roundhill funds, which we expected. There is no distribution rate at this time because it hasn't been trading long enough. They haven't put out a distribution yet, but they are going to. We can see the assets under management is very small, 0.8 million, $800,000. And expense ratio, what we expected, of 0.95%. Um, moving down, what I want to check out is their distribution calendar. So they're going to do the first declaration will be September 29 which is coming up here. we got a few weeks. The ex-dividend date will be the 26th of September, and then the pay date will be the 27th. And so that's going to continue. They're going to pay out that dividend very, very quickly, and then we'll actually see it come again in the 2nd of October because it is just so quick. It's every single week. So I'm very excited for that. I keep forgetting that these do pay every single week, but there's no distribution history yet, no dividend yield yet. So we're going to see what exactly happens. When we look at the fact sheet, it's very, very similar to the other two. So all the same information we just kind of looked at, we can actually see what their plan is and how this works. For those that don't know, um, I'm not going to explain it again, but it, it is very interesting how they're doing this option strategy for these weekly um, dividends. I really, I think it's really, really cool. And so that's it. There's not a whole lot of information about it. I'm super curious to see what you guys think. If RDTE seems like the better option, I've been hearing more and more people saying XDTE over QDTE, but you never know. I'm going to wait and see how they both perform. I do own all three of these funds. I did already purchase RDTE, but let's go into QDTE and let's see how much this fund has paid out so far and see if it's worth holding. Just starting off with QDTEs price appreciation, it is down. It's down about 11.2% on the year so far. We've seen this happen a lot with these really high yielding funds. And this is definitely one of those. I'm curious to see if they can rebound this or if it's going to continue to fall. We have not seen this with XDTE, which may be why people are kind of boasting about it a little bit more. One thing I want to note, this is on the BATS exchange. Um, which it, it stands for better something trade system or something like that. And I was a little nervous, like what kind of exchange is this? It's been around since 2005 and it's got quite a bit of money in the system. And it's kind of like a correspondent to the New York stock exchange. It's a little bit different, um, but I am not worried about it. It seems to be very, you know, very rep reputable, at least from what I've seen online, but we've seen this thing drop. I'm not pumped about that. It's very, very interesting how they're playing this weekly stuff. If they can actually continue this and not have crazy nav erosion like the yield max funds, I think this thing could be like a long-term pick for so many ETF investors, dividend investors, all sorts of people because this fund, it really has so much potential. Checking into the distribution history, we can see it's been all over the place. The more recent ones have been a bit better, but at the start, it had a, a lot less money in the fund, a lot less assets under management. So it's no su surprise that it was less back then, uh, but really low at some points down to nine cents one time, which I believe is the lowest. And they haven't really gotten that close to that, maybe 19, but still that's a huge difference. So it's been all over the place. You can see here, 21, 21, 14, that one was low, 21, 19, 35. And then we started jumping up more recently. There's been more volatility in the market. So I'm not surprised. So using the help of Seeking Alpha, I found that the total shares or the total dividend so far averaged out has been about 32 cents, 32.44 cents, which is great. Um, that is for every week. That's not bad at all. Now, what's interesting though, is the annual payout. So what it's paid out so far was $8 and 11 cents. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to divide this by the median. I fixed it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to divide this 8.11 by the median number. So because this fund has been trading for so long, I cannot simply just have an average price for the fund. And it wouldn't be accurate to depict it with the current price. Because if you, if those of you that don't know, the lower these funds go, the higher their dividend usually goes because they're kind of an inverse. So if the dividend is continuing to go up, that's because you're getting a higher percentage of money from the fund because the fund's price is going down. 
So, and if I mess that up, let me know in the comments. But what I'm going to do, I, I took the middle number, which was $43.84. And that's going to give us our actual return. Because then I'm going to divide this, or, or actually, I'm going to multiply this by 100. And that gives us an 18.499% return, which is significantly lower than they said. It, I mean, they have it at 38% currently. And if you run the numbers for like the full year return, that's closer on what they're anticipating. But we're running it based off of the information that we have right now. So I thought that was very, very interesting. And now what we have to do is we have to check the price appreciation. So like I said, it is down pretty heavily google finance is glitching today 11.2 percent so we're going to actually subtract 11.20 and you get 7.299 and this is with drip not calculated in so you're looking at a 7.3 percent distribution or return on capital so far which is not good at all in my opinion for what they boast that's that's not great and so i am really curious you have been paid 11 dollars and or sorry eight dollars and eleven cents if you've owned this fund since the beginning but it's been dropping it, it's been all over the place so maybe if they can level out this might be a better option but still that's definitely less than what people are thinking that they are getting and so i'm a little bit bummed about that now let's check out a drip calculator see how my calculation holds up to an actual drip calculator and then check the reinvested dividends versus non-reinvested dividends so I'm on dividendchannel.com. We're going to check out the QDTE uh, reinvestment calculator. So let's just, we're going to chart 10K invested and that's what we get. And so what we see is interesting. They have a lower total return than I even did. They have, oh, that's what dividends reinvested. With dividends not reinvested, they again have a lower return than I even calculated. So that's very, very interesting. I wonder what the difference is. If you know, if you've noticed, let me know in the comments. Um, they might just have maybe rounded less than I did, but who knows? Anyways. We can see that with dividends reinvested, you're getting a 6% return and an annualized return of just under 12%, which compared to the 38 that they are boasting is a significant difference. Um, very, very significant. And then looking at it with drip not in, we are seeing that it is actually less 5.5% return with a 10.73% annualized return with, um, with how it's going so far. Now, the reason why this might be different and why this might be a decent time to buy this fund, I'm not bashing QDTE. Like I said, I own it. Um, I bought more today, actually. But I really just want to see what it does. But why it could be, they might be projecting higher returns. There could be more hype in it. Now that there's more assets under management, they'll be able to make technically more if they're able to work with the volatility that we've seen in the market. So gen genuinely, I think this fund does have a lot of potential and I think it's a really, really good idea. Regardless of what happens with this one, I'm just pumped to see all these new ETFs flooding the invest investor space. It's really great to have options and to be able to really round out your portfolios. That being said, reminder, this is not financial advice and you need diversity. You should not own just QDTE because it pays weekly. You have to be diverse. I may do a video on diversity in your portfolio because it is really, really important. But anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far. I will be putting out a XDTE video, which I'm sure will be a little bit better news um, in a couple of days. So let me know what you guys think about QDTE versus XDTE versus RDTE. I hope you like that little preview in the beginning of the video. I'm so excited. I already own it. Maybe I should have waited, but I couldn't. So I'm super pumped to see what that starts putting out and expect more RDTE content from this channel as soon as we get some distributions. So I hope you guys have enjoyed. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.